Our today's story is about the serial killer who paralyzed Indian city Bombay with fear. Mumbai, the city that never sleeps, was once put to bed early in the evening. The Bombay of the swinging 60s with its glamorous nightclubs and jazz music was also home to another world, distant suburbs dotted with ramshackle shanties and huts, mostly peopled by migrant workers. Mumbai police, who grabbed the underworld by the throat, once fell short of hands to piece this puzzle together. And it was in these squalid suburbs that a terrifying wave of murders took place in early 60s. In the silence of the night, when the streets were dark and suspicion was low, Roman Ragave would emerge to look for anything that moves and hammer the life out of them. To him, people weren't people. They were objects from an opposite faction that he could smash and curb with blunt objects. There seemed to be no discernible motive. Parks and streets emptied out at dusk and in many areas, nervous residents carrying sticks patrolled the streets. He used a regular steel rod to reduce human faces to severed heads and broken skulls. When police found, Roman Ragaf turned out to be a nondescript looking man aimlessly wandering the streets with an umbrella. Between 1965 and 66, about 19 people were attacked by various weapons along the central railway line. Some of them bludgeoned to death, others survived to tell the horrific account of a scrawny looking man. In the meanwhile Roman was arrested by police on complaint of some migrated worker but, he was released due to lack of evidence. After his release, the murders stopped, but the respite was short-lived. When the bodies started piling up again in 60s, the investigative team found itself out of sorts, trying to piece this puzzle together. This time, over a dozen people felt the wrath of this unknown killer. No one had a clue where to begin and where to end their search. IPS officer Imakant Sheshagirai Rao Kalkani had just taken over as the DCP, CID, in Bombay when he was handed this red-hot case. Frenzied fear had gripped the suburbs and vigilante groups, often armed with lathis, kept watch at nights, sometimes battering wandering fake ears and homeless beggars on mere suspicion. 2,000 cops fanned out in the city on patrol duty. Once again, the citizens of Bombay went into a lockdown. Rumors started spreading about the supernatural powers of the killer. When Kalkani eventually did find the killer, he turned out to be a nondescript-looking man aimlessly wandering around grimy streets carrying an umbrella and a strange assortment of objects on his person. He was spotted by chance by a sub-inspector who noticed that his shirt and shorts were stained with blood. The police interrogation and later, his confession in front of a magistrate, painted a scary picture of an unbalanced, strange man. His name was Raman Ragaf though he went by several aliases, such as Sindhu Dalwai, Anna, and Tambi. It turned out that this was the second time he had indulged in such killings. In 1965-66, he had murdered nine people, most of them living next to a municipal water pipeline in the eastern suburbs. The police picked him up for questioning because he looked suspicious and had been seen hanging around the area. But the murders could not be proved and all that happened to Riman Ragaf was that he was thrown out of the city and barred from entering it for the next two years. For weeks after he was arrested, Roman refused to answer any questions asked by the authorities. It didn't matter to him if he was being beaten up or tortured. Of all the tricks in the book, it was a chicken dish that made Riman talk. While in the lockup, Riman requested for chicken curry. After weeks of interrogating him, the police decided to give in to his request. After finishing his chicken curry, Riman invited the officers to ask him whatever they wished to ask. It took fulfilling a few more wishes before the police got to know everything they wanted. 
Roman confessed to committing about 41 murders. Post his confession, he took the police force on a citywide tour to show the places he operated in and to obtain the rod he had hid in the northern suburbs. He was also blamed that he had raped his own sister. He was awarded a death sentence for his crime. Ragaf's sentence was reduced to life imprisonment because he was found to be incurably mentally ill. He was lodged at Yerwada Central Jail, Pune, and was under treatment at the Central Institute of Mental Health and Research on the direction of Indian courts. When a panel of doctors who examined him at the directive of the High Court found that he would never be cured, the High Court reduced his sentence to life imprisonment. Riman Ragaf was sent to Yerawada Jail where he died in 1988 of kidney failure after 19 years of incarceration. Kindly don't forget to subscribe our channel for more thrilling stories in English and Hindi. Thank you for watching this video.